So, Michael, here in Le Brassu, how are you? I'm doing great, Francois. It's a pleasure to be here. So, I have to share something with you. Those sunglasses, it's, it's actually not a joke. In the studio, it's extremely bright, and I got eye surgery a few days ago, so that's why I'm wearing these sunglasses, nothing else. So, I see that we have a lot of very exciting launches for 2021. So, why don't we dive in for the first, let's say, semester of the year, and let's see what we have to play with. Absolutely. Let's kick it off with code 1159. We're going to begin with that story right now. The big news in 2021 with code 1159 is the introduction for the very first time of the ceramic middle case. We have it in two models, white gold and rose gold chronographs. And the beauty of inserting the ceramic middle case, it brings something totally new aesthetically, but it's also a reminder of that unconventional form language, that great design, but also the exquisite finishing that is required on each aspect of the Code 1159 collection. And when you pull the camera back for a moment, so we now have these two new editions with ceramic middle case, and then consider the whole scope of where we've arrived at with Code 1159 yeah, because there is no way we're just going to talk about these two watches, correct? Absolutely. We have to look at the whole context of where we've arrived at here. We're only two years in. We have the wider range of the three hand as well as the chronographs with the beautiful colors. You have one on right now. The new in dials. Fact. The new dials with the beautiful smoke effects of all the various colors. Your, the complications, of course, which you know is close to my heart. The open work tourbillon, the self-winding tourbillon chronograph, the grand sonore. It's really in a short time evolved into such an incredibly vast collection and the form language really shows how diverse it is that can handle such a wide range of different movements, different aesthetics and different colors as well. You know, Francois, it never ceases to amaze me. Code 1159, in the same workshops, right next to each other, we see laser fusion from the 21st century, then we see heating conveyor belts of the 20th century, and then finally we see hand finishing techniques of the 19th and 18th centuries. It's really crazy. Past, present, and future, all in one atelier, all for the same watch. I love when you talk dirty. I know you do. And speaking of topics that we like to talk about, the other one that comes straight to mind is, of course, AP House, which is, has a similar sort of time frame. It's been around since Code 1159 as well. They kind of came together in that sense. AP House has been off to an incredible start. It's growing. It's expanding. And this year, we actually have a 15202 made exclusively for AP House. It's wait, 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 wait. Just AP House? Just AP House. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Limited production of 100 watches exclusively to be sold in AP House. It's one of the first times we've done a complete full platinum jumbo on bracelet, the 39 millimeter 15202. Not the first, but one of the first. And it is the first time we've paired this full platinum 39 millimeter jumbo with a sunburst green dial. The green on this dial is exceptional. The play of light is crazy. It's iridescent. It brings so much to heart when you look at that piece. It's unlike anything we've done. There's no tapisserie on the dial, sans tapisserie, uh, but really something beautiful. It conjures for me something almost imaginative. I, I, I can't help but think of the Emerald City and the Wizard of Oz when I see that dial. So what's next? Uh, actually, the next one is a big one. It's a big one because we've been waiting for it for a long time. As much as I've been working for Audemars Piguet, I've always heard, when are you going to come with an integrated chronograph mechanism? So yes, we launched it uh, two years ago now in the Code 1159 collection. But here it comes, in the Rhino collection, not on all watches, but there is a start there. But this integrated chronograph mechanism, Calibre 4401. So what can you tell us about it? Absolutely. You're right. For the very first time, Royal Oak Chronograph now has the in-house 4401 caliber. For the first year, exclusively on the rose gold watches, uh, one with blue uh, features on the dial, one with brown features on the dial. But the real big change from the previous versions of the Royal Oak Chronograph is because it's the in-house movement, we now have a sapphire case back so we can see that beautiful movement, all of the wonderful finishing techniques, all of those traditional techniques together with the timeless form language of the Royal Oak Chronograph. So absolutely, that is a big deal one. And 
we have both, we've all heard for many, many years when, 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 and now it has finally arrived. But also you remember that there was something special to it because in 2012, a few months after I became the global CEO, I had to put people in a room. Actually, there were 40 people that I put in a room at Hotel des Horlogers. It was four in the afternoon. And I said, I closed the door and I said, guys, it's very simple. We're going to stay in this room for as long as it takes. I need a new automatic caliber and a new integrated chronograph mechanism. Indeed, let's see what our colleague Luca has to say about this legendary development meeting of the 4401 caliber. So when you start such a from scratch development, you have basically two options. The first one is you decide the specifications one after the other. And as you know at AP, everybody loves to give his own opinion. So it's a never ending process and it's going to take years just to define the product. The option two, you bring all the people, you lock the door, and you let them escape once the specifications have been decided. And guess what? We took option two. And how long did it take us? Oh, about nine to ten hours. But you know, when we love, we don't count. Specifications? What do you have to know when you start? So it's very crucial that you decide the power reserve, the position of the counters, and the position of the date window. Because, you know, it's a very long journey. Uh, it will take us six to eight years. And every time you want to change those positions, you have to start the whole development again. Thank you very much, Luca. You're welcome, Mark. Now we spoke about mechanisms. Yeah. Let's talk about design for a second. Because 2021, another important milestone, we are, and we've done a relooking a complete relooking of the collection Rylock Offshore, not 44, not 42, brand new case, brand new finishes, brand new lines. And I said that one word that came reworking that collection was ergonomy, ergonomy, ergonomy. So I know that we went through a lot of headaches, but we put a lot of efforts to make it happen. So Michael, tell us more about it. Absolutely. It's been my pleasure. It's extremely exciting that we are now bringing in a brand new member of the Royal Oak Offshore family, and that is the 43 millimeter collection. To start with, we're going to focus on the high complication, the haute couture reference. No, 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 no. no. Haute couture. Haute couture. Getting there. Uh, model within the reference, which is the self-winding tourbillon chronograph, flying tourbillon, which is essentially the same movement that we had here in the Code 1159, but redeveloped and re-engineered specifically for the offshore. But before I get to the movement, I want to go back to the case, to your question. The new 43 millimeter case isn't an augmentation of what happened before. It really is something new and different. Yes, it echoes the aesthetics of the offshore, but it brings in something a little different. There's some curvature to the elements. There's an incredible amount of refinement to it. And as you said, the ergonomics of it are next level. The watch is designed to sit on your wrist just absolutely beautifully. The pushers are different. The lines are different. The edges are different on this watch. The self-winding uh, tourbillon chronograph it's only going to be offered as a limited edition watch in titanium, 100 pieces, and the movement is really as much of the star of the show as those new case aesthetics are. Limited edition, they will all be delivered in 2021. And you know what? To dive a little bit more into the design aesthetics of this watch, let's check in with one of our members of the design team, our good friend Sebastian Perret. Bonjour, je vous interromps juste un instant, j'ai une question importante pour toi Sébastien. Royal Oak Offshore Tourbillon Chronographe Automatique, d'où vient l'inspiration Alors l'inspiration, elle vient principalement du fait que ce modèle existe euh, depuis un certain temps, dix ans aujourd'hui, euh, et que pour nous, le challenge, c'était vraiment de, 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 de conserver l'ADN de cette pièce, de la faire évoluer, euh, dans un style contemporain, dans un style d'aujourd'hui, euh, mais de, de, de respecter le, le design et l'intention euh, du modèle. Tu viens de dire évoluer. Qu'est-ce qui a changé On a changé passablement de choses. C'est une foule de petits détails euh, qui fait que lorsqu'on tourne autour de cette pièce, 
on a réduit son, son, sa taille, on est passé de 44 à 43, on a amené aussi beaucoup plus d'ergonomie, on, on, a, on a tendu les lignes, on avait une pièce à l'origine qui était très anguleuse, très géométrique, et puis on a voulu aujourd'hui avoir des lignes plus douces, mais tout en conservant toujours ce, cet ADN racé, sportif, euh, et euh, cet esprit euh, de, de chronographe. Merci beaucoup, Sébastien. Merci. So, Michael, we talked about this haute couture version of the new Rhydoc Offshore. Why don't you walk us through the entire line now? I'd be happy to. So, we have new versions of the 43 millimeter, and they feature primarily stainless steel with ceramic bezels. There's also a rose gold version with ceramic bezel, as, where, as well as an entirely stainless steel version within the collection. All those touch points on the case dynamics that we saw on the self-winding tourbillon chronograph carry over to the general collection as well. The cases are identical in that sense in terms of the foreign language, the ergonomics, the slight curvatures to the watch. You have brand new dials on this collection as well. This mega tapisserie dial, no more do you see Audemars Piguet in the full signature. Now it's just the applied gold AP logo, same as we just saw on the complicated watch as well. But most importantly, It's the new movement. Just like we discussed with the Royal Oak Chronograph, we've taken the 4401 caliber and we've now implemented it into the offshore collection. So once again, sapphire displaybacks to be able to see the in-house 4401 caliber on the Royal Oak offshore 43 millimeter collection. I have to say that since we've been working on these new designs, one word that always came was ergonomics. And I made a very serious point of saying we have to work to make sure that any type of size of wrist would actually be able to have a right hook offshore and feel good about it. So I think the efforts are paying off because this collection is absolutely stunning. The last one we're going to look at today, Francois, is the newest entry into the Royal Oak Offshore Diver family. The diver goes all the way back to 2005, the earliest genesis of it at Audemars Piguet. And here we are in 2021 with brand new iterations of the diver collection. First and foremost, brand new movement caliber 4308, which is derived off the same caliber we introduced on the time-only code collection two years ago. Uh, that's number one. Number two, the dial aesthetics. Just like the other offshores we looked at, we have mega tapisserie, really bold. We have just the AP logo instead of the full Audemars Piguet signature on the dial. But the other dial aesthetics maintain those great dynamics that we had already introduced. The case size is 42 millimeters. So unlike the other new offshores in the 43 collection, we're keeping these divers in the 42 size. But it's the last feature, which might be the biggest in many, many regards. Finally, after all this time, we've been able to introduce detachable bracelets on the Royal Oak Offshore Collection. And not just the diver, also all of the new 43s. And even though I'm very bad with my hands, whoa. Look at that. That's easy. No tools are needed. You can do it at home. And in fact, every single new generation offshore in the 43, as well as the 42 diver, we're going to sell them with two straps so our clients can interchange as they choose. And there'll be additional strap options as well. And we got it here on the leather strap. So as in addition to the rubber straps, we also have leather. There you go. Okay, wait, so wait, not looking at it. Uh -huh. Okay, now looking at it, to put it back on. You know, as you said earlier, it really is a year of the offshore. It's one of the big things we're going to remember in the future, how many new developments came together in the offshore in 2021. So, we saw a lot of innovations and novelties for the first semester 2021. Why don't you give us a little recap of everything we saw so far? Absolutely. So here we are in March right now. The first releases that the public are going to see of what we just saw is the Jumbo, the 39 millimeter 15202 Platinum. That's going to be available in March, as well as the new Royal Oak Chronograph with the in-house movement. Those are going to be ready in here in March at the end of the month. 
The next ones will be in May. That is going to be the new Code 1159 collection with the ceramic middle case. So the two chronographs with the ceramic middle case will make their debut in May. In June, we're going to then see the Royal Oak Offshore self-winding tourbillon chronograph, the limited edition, high complication, haute couture piece in 100. Haute couture. Haute couture in 100 pieces. And then finally in September is when we're going to see the 43 millimeter Royal Oak Offshore chronograph collection hit the market. But that's only a part of the novelties for 2021. Absolutely. We, we're going to... Keep some surprises back as you've instructed us to do. You sure we, there's not anything else we share with people right now? You know there's something big we want to share, but we're going to wait a little bit longer. You, you made sure we're going to wait a little bit longer. Okay, so Michael, thank you for everything, and I'll see you later. Thank okay? you, Francois. Enjoy. Thanks, boss. You bet. Okay, so now I'm going to call my friend Don Schiedel. Hey, what's up, Francois? How you doing? Hey, Don. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us on the phone. So, what's up, boss? Good. I'm glad to be here. So, let's take some time to explain to our friends why we are actually here. What brings together a Swiss watchmaking seal and one of the top American actor of all time, well known as Colonel James Rhodes. Yeah, well, it's, it's, been a, it's been a long journey, right? This is coming up on 11 years that we've known each other. Uh, and the first time we met, we were actually standing in line at the Tonys. We were in line, and I was standing, I think, in front of James Earl Jones and behind you. And for some reason, out of the blue, you and I struck up a conversation. And as we do, started to uh, talk trash back and forth. Um, and you looked at my wrist, and you said, what are you wearing? And I kind of held my wrist out and showed you, and you really wanted to say something, but you had to kind of give a nod because I was wearing a nice piece. And you said, that's nice, but you should be wearing APs. And I said, well, tell me about AP. And uh, you started to tell me about your brand and your philosophy and, and the quality of the watch and the kinds of things that you did. And I happened to be on a show at that time called House of Lies, and I said, well, this sounds perfect for the character that I play. Uh, you should give me AP watches to wear on the show. And you said, why would I do that? So then I had to tell you all about the show and all about who my character was and the kinds of things that we wanted to do. And uh, to your credit, uh, not two weeks later, you shipped me a couple of watches to, to use on the show and my character wore APs for the entire five seasons. And uh, a great relationship between the two of us began. So we are happy, obviously, to have you as a part of our big family here today. And what I can say is, few families have superheroes amongst them. Do you think I could be a superhero? Yeah, if you drop about 20 <laughs> pounds. <laughs> no, no, no. Yes, of course you could. I mean, you have the right spirit. You have the right, uh, uh, you know, sort of point of view. Uh, and I think, yeah, we could, we could find a space for you. I don't know if you're going to be a hero or a villain, though. That's, <laughs> that, that remains to be seen. Okay, okay, whatever. It seems that Marvel and AP have much more in common than we thought. We have a lot of things in common. Nothing uh, less so than our desire to, with everything else that we do uh, in the world, is to give back and to make sure that we're always thinking uh, of those that are, are less fortunate than we are and that we always make it one of our main goals to, to, to support and to uh, you know, really be about that in, in, in every way, soup to nuts, everything that we do, our careers, our personal life, and, and that continues today. And in 2021, that will be truer than ever. And I'm really happy to announce a collaboration I've been dreaming of for more than 15 years now. 15 years, everything started when I discovered the Mickey Mouse characters on watch dials from the Gerard Genta collection in the 90s. And I have to say, you helped me get in contact with the Marvel people in Los Angeles after we had met in Paris, and I explained to you my project. So you are the one. You are the one that made this whole thing possible. 
and I will never thank you enough for that. So Don, thank you for your time. Be ready on April 10th for the launch of the collaboration. Till then, take care, stay safe. Hey, Michael, what's up? Hey, Francois, how you doing? Good. So I hear that we've got already a lot of questions. I'm not going to waste any second and start with the first one. Which watch will start the Marvel collaboration? Which watch? We'll have to wait and see. April 10th. We said April 10th. So April 10th it is. Coming soon. Uh, I'm going to go to the second one. Does the partnership with Marvel include the placement of AP watches in movies? The Sorry, the answer is no, it's not. We actually made a partnership with the Marvel comic books and not the studios, uh, because for many characters it wouldn't make any sense to actually the watch in the movies. So that was the deal on day, on day one. It was with the comic books characters, which is more than 6,000 of them. So we have a long time to go. Gives us a much bigger feel to play with as well. I'm going to go to another one. All stainless steel clients are waiting for 2022 to buy a Rilo Chrono. Can you tell us what's coming up next year? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Michael. Oh, I'm not saying much. Not with you opposite here. I'll get in trouble. Look, as, as great as 21 is with Offshore, we can multiply that times two for Royal Oak for the big anniversary next year. A lot of great surprises coming. We're going to give a, a little something today. We're going to just say also that it's not going to be only about design and dials. There will be also some major innovations. Okay, I'm going to go. How can I get a 15500? How to get a 15500? Well, of course, it's like everything else. Forge a great relationship. Uh, begin that journey. Begin that path. And also keep in mind, if you're waiting on something of the current generation, there is amazing legacy of Audemars Piguet, 39 and 41 millimeter Royal Oaks going back quite a long time. So while you're waiting for that new piece, there's also a great vibrant secondary market with some awesome models available. Okay. Is there a new collaboration with Raf and Russo forthcoming? So there is obviously because we, we are keeping the relationship going and we made a deal with Tamara that we would actually work on a watch together. Now if you've read the news, the company is, uh, is not doing so well lately, but I wish First of all, I wish them the very best. It's an outstanding company with an outstanding uh, creativity and we want them to succeed. And we will follow every step of what they, they do. And hopefully we're gonna see the watch with uh, Tamara going, uh, going uh, good as well. Another one, tack, tack, tack. Will there be a new advanced research RD edition to follow RD1 and RD2? Absolutely, yes. The RD projects have a great future ahead. We can even say that we're already on RD6 in terms of plans. We are. Yes. We are. So the next several years, a lot of ex very exciting things coming on that trajectory. Okay, should we say that RD3 is coming? Yes, this we can say. Yeah. RD3 is next year. Perfect. Yes. It's a good one. <laughs> They're getting close. Yes, RD3 is coming next year. Ah, there's a question which is written test. Okay. How safe is a detachable strap? The detachable, it's super safe. I mean, the team went through great length to make sure it was going to be durable, strong. You and I really went at it. We were, yeah. It pulled as hard as we could. We know, we know how people wear our watches. I mean, that's the, that's the power of Audemars Piguet in the sense that people don't want to take them off. They want to live, they want to live their lives with their watches on. So we had to make sure it had that durability to it. No, no, and really, no jokes. Uh, joke, no jokes. It's, it's, 
I'm not that good with my hands in general, so to be able to boot this that easily, and it's very strong. We played it very no, no. It's so it's going to be safe. It's really well designed. It's a lot of fun. Okay. And only on the offshore collection. We're not doing it on any others. Mm. Oh, I love that next one. When can I buy your watches with Bitcoin? I, you know, look at this is a big open question depending on who you ask. What's the latest on that from your end? Are you looking say, into it? At Odoma Piguet, we don't close the door at, for anything. And I do believe that at some point, uh, the cryptocurrencies will be a way of paying our, and buying our watches. No doubt. That's going to be an evolution that we see coming. That day will come. Now, when exactly, I wouldn't be able to tell you. But if it goes broader and bigger by the day at some point we'll say it done we so have to do it as well we're totally open-minded to keeping that door for the crypto exchanges in the future completely cool Tack. we want 39 millimeter right oak offshores is it part of your plans 39 millimeter offshores the answer is no no 38 millimeter of shells? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Sure. sure, we have. Okay, so 38, definitely. 39, no. No. Not in the works. I really like green, new craftsmanship on 16331. When will it be available? So the green dial watches are going to be coming out between now and September. There's the yellow gold, especially the yellow, yellow gold. gold. Well, that one's primarily we're looking at the U.S. market for that watch. There's still there'll be a little available beyond that point, and that one's going to be launching this summer. In the summer, yes. Could you be more precise, Michael? That's a great question. I don't have the exact date off the top, as you just well read on my face. I'm thinking it's June. It's June for that. Hey, well, June, July, August. I have thirty percent chance of okay. getting that right. Summer. <laughs> okay. What's the expectation for this Marvel partnership? I think the expectation for the Marvel partnership is to is to is to tell great stories, to reach a really wide range of people, to open up the dialogue between what we do and how we share it, how we create it, and as you've been talking a lot about, is really getting down to what does it mean to be a hero, to look at that idea not just on the silver screen and not just in the comic book pages, but in everyday life as well. What what, what do you have to? No, add to there that? was always a sense of celebrating the superheroes that no one will ever hear about. Because, and there are plenty of them that live their lives every day that nobody talks about. Actually, it's uh, Don Cheadle that said that Brad Pitt told him once that when you are a major celebrity like they are, you cannot get out of the light. And through the program we got to partner with, with uh, the people from Marvel, it's actually to be able to bring the superheroes, the unknown ones, under the light. Okay? To... to uh, through programs, we got, we got to help two major ones. One is called First Book, and the second one is called Ashoka. But they got to work together. It's for underprivileged kids, okay, that will, don't like, get access to the ideal education, and that will support them, and that will go on for years. It's not a one hit and run where we go, we give the money, we go for one year, and then it's gone. It's going to be for multiple years, and that's the way we also built the partnership with Marvel, actually, through the course of a multiple years contract where we're going to use different characters and support different programs down the road. Great. Took. Took. Where are the AP houses in the world right now? Ooh. Let's start from the east. Let's start from the east. Okay. Well, we have Hong Kong, of course. Then we but and we gotta have Tokyo very Tokyo's soon. Tokyo's on the way. So Tokyo, Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Then we have we we have Thailand. Thailand, which is a beautiful one. Then we move to Europe. And we have Mar Barcelona, Munich, Madrid. Yeah. London. London, Munich. and Milano. Yeah. Which will be a new, a new, brand new place in 2022. Yeah. And then we'll open New York by the end of the year or early 2022. But there is a goal to open many more in the world in the next two or three years because we found that this program works very well and our clients spend on an average three to four times more 
in a house that they would spend in a store. And knowing that a house is not a retail area per se, people have organized baby showers, wedding ceremonies, I mean, business meetings. So it's much more an open place where you are under the Audemars Piguet umbrella. And I think we're going to push the boundaries even further. Absolutely. All those non-transactional engagements we love. The food and the music as well. The AP House is such a great location for us to dive deeper into those engagements too. I had forgotten about that one, the music. Oh yeah. We are working on many, many things in the music world. Absolutely. Okay. Any news regarding CPO? Yes. Go ahead. So CPO, we have been testing. We've been doing piloting the program in Switzerland. We're opening that up in, in the pilot as well in Japan. But we're really taking our steps one at a time to make sure we do it right. We're not going to dive in too deep, too fast, moment to moment to really see, to make sure we get it right as we open this up. And you're gonna, we're potentially going to pilot a little bit in New York in the future too. Yes, because the most important thing is to really give the ultimate experience for our clients. And it's not to rush into something just for the, for the, for the thrive of it and say, oh, we've got to be in so many countries at the same time. It's very important to do it right. And it takes a lot of planning before actually opening the doors. Why don't you focus more on the Jules Audemars collection? The Jules Audemars collection is technically retired at this point. It is. It is no longer in production. It was a beautiful collection, but it didn't have a strong identity. It wasn't easily distinguishable as an Audemars Piguet watch. And that was really what helped fuel the design briefs that went in ultimately into what became code 1159. So those watches are there. They're on the market. But for now, the only watches in the round sector we're creating are the code 1159 watches. I love you when you answer so precisely, straight to the point. Will, will the 26331, which is the Rilo Chronograph 41 millimeter, get caliber 4401? Eventually, like we've done for the Rose, we will open that up towards other the other watches eventually, but it's going to take time. New calibers or new production, new tooling, new techniques. We just can't overnight completely shift out of the FPG and into the brand new caliber, which is why we started on the rows. The quantities are relatively less on the rows compared to the steel. So as we are able to increase our production of that caliber, which is also in the code chronographs, we will eventually extend it to the rest of the collection as well. But step by step, we have to do it in the right, right way. Yeah, because it's a matter of scaling for people to understand when we launch a new mechanism on year one, you can actually test a thousand. Then you go from a thousand to three thousand, then eventually five thousand, and maybe on the fourth year to seventy five hundred to eight thousand. So it's you have to you have to play with the scaling of this uh, of this new uh, arrival of a mechanism, and that applies for any mechanism we work with. So I don't know if I'm getting the same question all over again on the fifteen five hundred. <laughs> okay, so. Will you use the Rylog Tourbillon Chrono design to, for other Rylog models too? Actually, it's the name Augusto, Augusto Veroni. The Tourbillon Chrono design? It's for other Rylog models too. Okay, well, the new generation Tourbillon Chronograph, the self winding. Which maybe also the. Yes. Oh, the, well, that's just Turbion. So mm. the new Turbion chronograph, was, first we'll reference that. We debuted that on code last year, and this year, as we just saw, we brought that on to offshore. There is no immediate plans to see a version of that caliber on Royal Oak. Royal Oak has other great complications coming. However, the Royal Oak Turbion absolutely is going to keep evolving in very new and exciting ways. But no immediate plans for this generation Royal Oak Turbion chronograph. Immediate plans. What colors will the diver come in? So the diver is coming in steel, titanium, and rose gold. And we saw the different dial colors over there. We chose the initial dial colors to be able to be balanced with those interchangeable straps. We didn't go too crazy. You see the blues, you see the beiges, you see tones that are great everyday wear watches and where we can read readily switch between straps. But for sure, over time, we'll start to see 
more adventurous dial interpretations enter into the new generation 42 millimeter diver. But to start with, we're playing it, I don't want to say safe, but we're playing it in a way where you can really enjoy and love those watches every, every day, and most importantly, have fun with the straps, which is where all the different design elements come in. And by the way, I got news this morning, actually, before the session, yeah? on the interchangeable straps. You yes. see, I said it right. You now. did. That was great. Okay. Uh, on the, because people were asking if they could retrofit, actually, the old offshores with a new system. And the answer is yes. We, we said a few weeks ago that we would work on it. It's, it would come. Now we've got even a, a sort of time frame. It should come available the beginning on the last uh, three months of the year 2021. So confirm, so my older Safari 42, I'll be able to get fitted with the detachable strap system. Yes, but not every, everybody at once. Of course. Again, we have to, but yes, the answer is Very yes. cool. That's okay. great. What's new for ladies? I'm going to answer that one. Uh, that will be the sessions for September, actually, oh, yeah. because what we showed to you today are the very first collection for the first semester of the novelties for Audemars Piguet. And the second part will be introduced in September. And it's then that you will see a lot of new things for ladies, from the Rilo collection to the Concept collection to the Offshore collection. Many things for women as well on the second part of the year. Absolutely. And, and in my scope of complications, the women's complications sector is a lot of great growth potential in there. We're going to see some beautiful concepts down the road. Is Iron Man on the waiting list of Marvel watches? So the answer is, it was obviously the first time we met with the people from Marvel. We went already there with six different characters. And Iron Man was one of them, obviously. And what we have to share, and it's an official... Uh, uh, thing from them is we, we would have difficulties to use the name Iron Man because of the race, okay, the triathlon race, which is called Iron Man, who has a partner for a watch. So, because of that, we'll have difficulties to call the watch Iron Man. They would let us potentially say, yes, it could become the uh, Tony Stark watch. That's not the same thing. So, Iron Man is not in the pipeline for the years to come. So it's that you will, So we will not see Iron Man on the 10th of April. That nope. much we can say. That's one down. <laughs> 5,999. <laughs> Hi, question from the UK. Uh, the UK, will there be an AP in the future with a carbon fiber case? So we've done forged carbon in the past. I would say the last high high stakes release a uh, high profile release was the concept schumacher lap timer that involved carbon and for us to go back into a material like that it has to be it has to be perfect it's as simple as that we can't introduce a material that can't be hand finished to show the play of light and it has to be durable and strong so it's one of the many materials that we're looking at on re in research and development and if and when we come back to it it has to be the best possible execution of forged carbon that we can do. But what we can say is there was a, a meeting recently at Audemars Piguet with the R&D department and we saw a lot of things in terms of material that we could use in the future that could really make a statement. Big time. And the key theme of all of those, what ties all those together is can they be hand finished? Can they be machine finished? Can we see that play of light of the satin and mirror finishings encountering each other? That's always the trick regardless of what that material is but some great things coming on materials. Which new releases will get to India? What is the plan for Indian AP collectors? Okay, so we are right now in 74 countries, pretty much with Audemars Piguet, and in India as well, but we don't have a big distribution there. No. Okay, obviously, and there are many countries like that. Uh, we know that we've got a lot of people from India who love Audemars Piguet, and we encourage them to actually see what we could do, but outside of India, because the distribution is pretty complicated there. It's not that easy uh, uh, to play with, but hopefully we're going to be able to also host uh, pop-up sessions and pop-up uh, things in, in India, because we know that we have a great appreciation in that country for the Marpigue. So it's not a matter of saying we don't think about it. It's on our radar. It's just a matter of how to, to make it work logistically, which is not always very easy. Hi, Francois. 
May I ask you why the Rilo Chrono Yellow Gold with green face does not have the new movement like the rest of the Rilo Chrono in gold? The question is for me, but you've got to answer. Okay, I'll answer. It goes back to, well, for th that project started quite a while ago before we were even ready to announce the new caliber on the Royal Oak. That one go goes back a couple years when we were still deep in the 2385. We didn't know if and when and how many would be ready of the new generation caliber for the Royal Oak. It was simply a matter of timing. We just focused on the rose gold watches for that one, and this is really going to be possibly be the last limited edition with that 2385 in movement gold? in gold. No doubt. Yeah. That's the last one. So that was another nice way of including it was now we can officially announce that will be the last limited edition with that FPK 2385 caliber. Which you are not supposed to say, but you just said it anyway. We outed it. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay. Are major complications by AP still being developed with Renault and Papi? Absolutely. So Renault Puppy is Audemars Piguet in our Laloc facility. That's how it's been since the 1990s. It's never been separate from Audemars Piguet. It's always been very much one and the same. In fact, our facility in Laloc and our facility here in Le Brassou are working together all the time. Lots of harmony, lots of cooperation on the developments, not just of complication calibers, but even the chronograph caliber that's on code in the new Gold Royal Oaks involved uh, APRP, AP Laloc, as we wish to say. So without a doubt, that is one in the same company, has been for 25 years, and will continue along that trajectory. In fact, we are op we're, we're going to be uh, unveiling the new campus soon up there. We're going to be able to bring more guests up to that facility to be able to see. So without a doubt, the interactions between all of our different watchmaking centers are very solid, very strong, and lots of coordination and cooperation between all the watchmakers and craftspeople. And, and so on top of this, there is not such a thing anymore as far as Renault and Papi more than Le Brassu or Merin, no. which is our manufacturer of uh, cases, cases, bracelets. We all work together and location doesn't matter anymore. Not at all, and it hasn't for a long time. Any major changes in the 15202 next year? I'm going to take that one. Whew. So another huge watch company actually uh, said recently that they would stop making the 5711, uh, which is so Patek. <laughs> 5711 is Patek. So we could say that there will be a new reference for 15202 next year. So we will not make the 15202 ST, but that will be replaced by something else. And for specific reasons that we will not talk about today. Perfectly said. Okay, good. Will we get a remaster too? Absolutely. When you see a one, there's going to be more that follows, whether that's an RD1 or whether that's a remaster one, more will come. In fact, I believe you already gave the approval on what the next remaster project is going to be. Except that there is a little... Ah. No, there is a side uh, road. It okay. might not be called remaster Ooh. for specific reasons. Very cool. Okay. Why. So the spirit of remaster, is the there. spirit of exploring the past and, 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 and reimagining it in new ways is very, very much alive. Okay. I think we're pretty much done with the question. In that case, since that closes our first semester uh, presentation, Michael, is there one question you would have loved not to answer it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I, you know, it already came up. I get nervous when people ask about 2022 sitting across from you. You know I like to give hints, and that's dangerous when I'm sitting opposite you. So I feel, I feel pretty good about, about the question. What about you? Anything that hasn't come up that, uh, that you want to play the challenge game with? You want to no, see me but sweat? No, many, many. Yeah. There are many questions that I would have loved, but uh, there are many questions I would love to answer to people Face to face. That too. <laughs> we love face to face. We love face to face. And that's how we're going to end up today. So thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Uh, you were close to 3,000 people at some point. So thank you so much for making the time on this beautiful Monday. A week ago, it was snow everywhere. Now it's purely sunny and grass is back. But thank you so much. And hopefully we're going to see each other face to face sooner than later. Thank you again. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye.